Carol and Fiona Givens, Gems of the Restoration, Part 2. We are eternal beings who lived with heavenly parents. Sunderland Stake Fireside, September 2020. The second truth that we want to talk about today is the truth that we are eternal beings who lived with heavenly parents. Aristotle said, only that is free which is not caused by another. And here's what he meant by that. Let's say that you make a birthday cake for your beloved, and with the first taste, it's evident that this cake is an absolute disaster. Well, whose fault would that be? Well, it would, it would fall to you as the baker. You are the one who made it, so you're the one responsible for it. If God created our human spirit, then he is responsible for its choices and its nature. Uh, as recently as the late 20th century, one of the great philosophers of the Cambridge School, John McTaggart, Ellis McTaggart, made this point repeatedly in his writings. He said, if God created our souls, he could have prevented all sin by creating us with better natures and in more favorable surroundings. Hence, we should not be responsible for our sins to God. McTaggart said there was only one solution to this dilemma, and that was to posit a soul that is as eternal as God. And that, of course, is precisely what Joseph Smith did. Joseph Smith taught that there was never a time when spirit was not, that we are co-eternal with God. If we are co-eternal, that means that we are responsible, and that means that we are truly free, because our natures, our spirit, our dispositions were not created or informed by a superior being. That, to me, is a glorious resolution of a philosophical and theological problem that has stymied the greatest thinkers for over 2,000 years. A second reason why I cherish this doctrine of pre-mortal existence was uh, expressed by Elder Quentin Cook in a general conference just a few years ago. He said, we all participated in the councils of heaven that provided for moral agency knowing that there would be mortal pain and even unspeakable tragedy because of the abuse of agency. We understood that this could leave us angry, bewildered, defenseless, and vulnerable. Now think for a minute about the implications of what he is saying. He's saying that we were not innocent victims of Adam and Eve's decision, that we are not thrown upon the shores of this world capriciously or by, by divine fiat but that in fact we participated in those councils that determined the nature and the context of mortal life. And as Elder Cook intimates, it's unlikely that our Heavenly Father would have encouraged us to undertake these ordeals without giving us a foretaste of what was in store. And what that means is that in those moments when we face the worst that life can throw at us, we can have the consolation of knowing that there was a time when we foresaw the kinds and the extent of tragedies and trials that we would undergo, and that we willingly agreed to participate in this process and agreed to undertake these mortal probations. <clears throat> I think that that can be a, a powerful incentive and consolation in those moments when life is most difficult. Um, just to add to that, I think if we look at um, the book of Abraham, chapter 3, what is stunning to me is that God uses the ter terms intelligence, spirit, and soul interchangeably. And there is a, su is a suggestion there that we are invited to collaborate in the creation of the earth. Ye are joint heirs with Christ. It makes it real for me, the restored um, gospel tells us that we are consubstantial with God in that we are inherently divine. We're very young, we're very young in that divinity. Uh, we are not mature, we have not yet received uh, the education we need, but the promise is there that we shall become joint heirs with Christ, and that is absolutely stunning. Annotated and summarized, easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.